Woohoo! Welcome back. Tonight we're going to be talking about two seemingly different topics which are actually really, really closely related. And the first one is that we're going to pause what we're working on in chapter 13 and work on something called summation notation. In the previous video, we were adding a bunch of things together. And when we add a bunch of things together, it gets really tiresome to have to write them all out. And so in mathematics, we have a special symbol that allows us to write a bunch of things like that, write them out using a fairly compact uh, notation. So we're going to use the Greek letter and it always looks like an E to me, but this is sigma and it corresponds to our letter S and that stands for sum. And so this capital letter sigma is going to be used and the way we're going to use it is that we're going to say that we're going to say I, that's just a counting number, is going to start at one, for example. So for this one, I starts at one and it goes up till five. Now, if you're writing it by hand, you actually write it at the bottom and at the top. If you're using Microsoft Word or another, you know, online way of um, writing things out, sometimes like Microsoft Word writes it this way where the top and the bottom are written to the right rather than above and below. So it's a little bit weird, but we've got the starting point and the ending point. And then here I've got A sub I. So it says I is going to be one. And then you step through, you start the counter, you go one and then you go two, three, four, and you would just keep going until you get to the end one, which is why we've got A1, A2, A3, A4, and then we stop at A5. And now what do we do in between? Well, this sigma means we add them together. So take a sum of these five things. So that's what that means. And for what we're doing in this section, we're just gonna leave it at that. We're just going to introduce this new notation and be like, isn't this interesting? And then we will talk about it more in the next section. So let's go ahead and find the following sums. So sum, again, remember addition gives you a sum. So this is sigma, I is going to start at one, go all the way to five, and we just, our function is going to be whatever I is. So when I equals one, we want one. When I equals two, we just want two. I equals three, three. I equals four, four. And then we check, we're going to stop at five. I equals five, five. And we always increase by one. So these are just going to be the counting numbers or the natural numbers. And then remember, this symbol, sigma, means add them all together. So that's what we get. So we get one plus two plus three plus four plus five. So one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus four is 10, plus five is 15. So this is kind of a nice break. These homework problems, hopefully the practice, will be kind of a nice break from the heavier, you know, detail-oriented other problems. So it's kind of a nice thing, and it's a new notation. You guys can use it. You could have a math party. You could, you know, have invite your friends over and just sum stuff together. It's, it could be very exciting. So here, sigma. Now here I'm going to count. My counter is now K. K is going to go from 1 to 5. So when K equals 1, K equals 2, K equals 3, K equals 4, K equals 5. You do not have to write this. I'm writing this to hopefully make it easier to follow. Now, what are we interested in? We're interested in K squared. Okay, so when K equals 1, we've got 1 squared. When K equals 2, that's 2 squared. 3, 3 squared, 4 squared, and 5 squared. 
And then what are we gonna do in between? We're gonna add. Now, I hear a lot of you saying, but Catherine, if this is summing bunch of sums, is there a way to do this with a product? And I would say, oh my gosh, there is. So if you actually wanted to multiply these all together, you'd use a different letter. You wouldn't use sigma. So it's kind of cool. There are other things we could do, but for this class, we're just going to be adding. And you might say, is there a way to subtract? And I would say, no, 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 no. No, we don't do that at all. No subtraction. Subtraction is a figment of your imagination. Mathematics doesn't really acknowledge subtraction. Okay, so what, it, what am I doing? I'm taking the sum of perfect squares. 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25. So I'm going to see, now here's a cool trick. I could add, or I could say 1 plus 9 is 10. So that's 10. 4 plus 16 is 20. 10 plus 20 is 30. Plus 25 is 55. Or you just use your calculator, you know. Okay, this last one I'm including because it's weird. It's a little bit of, it's not really a trick, but if you've never seen it and you come across it, like in the homework, it will be very confusing. So I wanted to go over it. So this time our counting variable is going to be j. So that's our index. We want to go from j equals 1 to 5. I know I had 5 on the brain. I don't know why. So we're going to go j equals 1, j equals 2. Remember we start at 1, go up to 5. j equals 3, j equals 4, j equals 5. Okay, so far so good. Now here's the thing. What are we going to do with the j's? And the answer is, we're not. It's the sum of five, which is really weird. And if no one has ever shown this to you before, you probably would think just the answer is five. But basically the rule is you want to write five for each of these counting numbers. So that's five, that's five, that's five. So it's a constant function. And then what are we doing in between? We're adding. So in this case, the instructions are to add 5 for each of the values of j. So 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 5 is 15, 20, 25, the whole thing is 25. Woohoo! So, some wild and wacky stuff, and this is called, again, summation notation with sigma. Woohoo! Yay! Okay, so I hope you have a good snack, and I hope you have a support your favorite support stuffy or your favorite support snack or just a happy place to sit in, maybe a beautiful picture on the wall because dun, 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 it's a word problem from the book. Oh no, oh, oh no. Okay, we can totally do this. So this is how we're actually going to use the information we have. Crude oil and petroleum products are imported continuously by the United States. So, in other words, this is happening all the time. It doesn't stop. But we only have a table of what's happening every two years. You can see 2014, 2016, 2018, 2020, 22, and 24. And as of this recording, a few of these are estimates because I think the book was republished right around in here. And so this is in billions of dollars. So some of these are a projection. Um, and so what can we do if we don't have information for every single day? We just have a few pieces of information. And the answer is we can estimate that came out funny. We can estimate. Estimate? Oh my goodness. I've been recording for too long, so I apologize. I've forgotten how to word. Um, but we can come at an approximation for the total amount that are being imported just with this limited information. So let's talk about how we can do this. 
we're going to use five equal subdivisions. So we're going back to those that graph we were working with before, except we don't even have a graph. We just have a table of information. And we're going to use left-hand endpoints. And I'm going to tell you how to do that to estimate the area under the graph from 2014 to 2024. Okay. So first thing. I don't have a graph, but what I do have is I know that I'm looking at the years from 2014 to 2024. I want to break it into five equal subdivisions. So first thing I look at is I see there are 10 years here. So let's see if I break this up. Then I've got one, two, three, four, five. That's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. So in a perfect world, I would use, um, I would go ahead and use graph paper, but I don't have it right now. So I'm using this piece of paper. So 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that's, and so there are 10 years, right? The whole span is 10 years. If I want to break it into five equal subdivisions, that would be looking at 2016, looking at 2018, 2020, and 2022. 10 years divided by five subdivisions or sub intervals. is equal to two years each, right? So we're going to be looking at two year intervals. Now, what does left versus right mean? So it means in this first interval, I'm going to look for F of 2014 times two years, right? And then for this one, I'm going to look at in this interval, I use the left side. So it's F of 2016 times two. Then for this one, I go for 2018, F of 2018 times two. For this one, it's 2020. times two, and then no matter how hard I try, I'm always slightly too short. Sorry about that. Um, true in real life as well, for this last interval, sub-interval, I go for 2022. So, which, which dates do I use? I use the ones on the left. So 2014, 2016, 2018, 2020, 2022, and I do not use the information for 2024 because this is left-handed. Now, if I wanted right-handed endpoints, I would start at 2016, because that's on the right side, and I would do all of these, and I would include 2024. Okay, so it's the left versus the right. Now, I don't have a function, so I can't calculate this. What I have is I have this value, so I know it's 219.5 billion, times two, because I'm going to assume that over these two years, that the 219.5 stays constant. Now, is that true? And the answer is no. Did any of these numbers match? No. So would you guess that there's a good chance that the amount of petroleum products and crude oil coming in would vary widely each year? Absolutely. So this is just an estimate because I don't have, do I have the information from 2015? I do not. So this is just going to be a good guess. I'm going to use 2014 for two years. And then I'm going to use 2016 for also for two years. So that's going to be 192 times two. And then I'm going to use 2018 for two years. I'm going to use 2020 for two years. And I'm going to use 2022 for those two years. Okay. 
So this one I will absolutely need a calculator for. Now, if you've all noticed that since they're multiplying all times two, I don't have to do each one times two. I could add them all together and then multiply by two. That would also be fine. For our purposes though, I feel like I should multiply each one. So 219.5 times two is 439. 192 times 2 is 384. 191 times 2 is 382. 198.9 times 2 is 397.8. This a little bit. There we go. 214.5 times 2, 429. So, again, I'm using the information that we have as an estimate. I don't have all the information, so I do my best. And because I'm counting each one for two years, this is spanning 10 years of these um, imports. And through the magic of television, Magie, I know that the total here is going to be 2031.8. And this is in the billions. So, and in fact, I don't need to write the S at the end, sorry, given that I wrote the dollar sign. So, 2031.8 billion. So we're into trillion dollars, two trillion dollars in crude oil and petroleum products over the 10 years that we're covering. covering. Which is quite a lot. So this is just one way we can use this new technique. In the next videos, we're going to talk about what to do from here and how to smooth this out and what this has to do with calculus and the derivative, which is pretty cool stuff. So um, I'm going to leave you here with this. Remember, if you get if you get stuck on the homework, please find me, find a tutor, ask lots of questions because you are basically incredibly smart and amazing and incredible. And um, don't, don't, don't just sit and get frustrated and bang your head against a computer because it's not a good use of your head or the computer. Um, reach out for help. Um, some of these word problems can be a little bit, a little bit, a little bit um, you know, kind of detail oriented. So if you get stuck, ask questions. And then, you know, give yourself a good break and a pat on the back. And then I will see you in the next video. Until then, woohoo and math on.